It's got, they got a real life uh, paparazzi, I see. <laughs> Fuck you think I am? What do you think is a game? Watching out for the media, nigga. I'm like Bigfoot, nigga. When people see me, they freak the fuck out. Oh, shit. Even other celebrities get surprised and see me. Hey, shit. Oh, shit. hey thanks. Come on, y'all only got 10 minutes. God damn. So, no, it's good. I don't have any material. That, is, that stuff's for pussies. Every time I see this backdrop, I think about. Kramer fucking up. <laughs> That's why I can't, I don't want to see no camera phones on my ass tonight. <laughs> Cause my, I'm telling you right now, my, you know, like I'm not wrapped too tight. Like they, they putting a lot of that corporate pressure on me. So I, this might be the night that I, this might be the night that I snap and you got, you guys be lucky. It's like having tickets to see Siegfried and Roy the night that tiger bit that motherfucker's throat. He's like, I was there when that Chappelle freaked out. I was there. Because that's why we really go to the Tiger Show, right? You don't, you don't go to see somebody be safe with Tigers. You go thinking in the back of your mind, like, this nigga might get bit. I'd like to see that in person for $35 if I could. <laughs> Never seen somebody get bit by a tiger before. Only $35. That's fucking hilarious. I, I tell you the truth, when I seen Kramer's tape, I learned about myself. You know what I learned? I think I'm only like 20% black and 80% and comedian. You know what I mean? And uh, black dudes can relate. You know what I mean, bro? Like when you saw that shit, he was furious, right? Black dude, he was like, Kramer, you motherfucker. Like, I was hurt. And the comedian in me was just like, whew, niggas having a bad set. Hang in there, Kramer. <laughs> Don't let him break you, Kramer. <laughs> oh, I wish I was there so bad. Because, you know, you know, in the back of his mind, he was thinking, I'll get him the next show. <laughs> there won't be a next show, Kramer. <laughs> Phew. You know what I hate ever since I walked away from that show? Is that uh, people keep trying to give me advice. Cause I guess I've been like depressing. She you know you'd be depressing and people be like trying to cheer you up. And then I in show business. That's what made me so mad about it. So they'd be saying stupid, hey Dave, look, I know that was a rough experience and I can only imagine what you've been through, but you know, you just gotta hang in there and what you gotta do is you just gotta keep your chin up. You just keep your chin up, Dave. Word, that's what I was doing, that's what I was doing wrong. Was my chin was too low. Shut the fuck up, it's had nothing to do with my chin, nigga. This Fuck it, keep your chin up. What kind of shit is this? See niggas walking around show business. Oh, I know. <laughs> so, and this girl I knew sent me a book called The Secret. She was like, listen, David, this is gonna help you. It's called The Secret. I, you know, I thought, this, you know. And I started reading the book and I read like five pages of shit and threw it in the trash. I was fucking. I can't believe they sell this shit. Do you know what this bitch says the secret of life is? She said it was positive imagery. You gotta visualize the things you wanna have happen in your life. Like, bitch, that's the secret of life to you? Then kill yourself. <laughs> it's gotta mean more than that. Positive imagery. Let a bitch fly to Africa and tell one of them starving children that shit. What's wrong with you? I have not eaten in five days. What you need to do is visualize some roast beef and some mashed potatoes and gravy. Oh, please, bitch, you're killing me. Stop talking like that. No, 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 no. The problem is you have a bad attitude about starving to death. <laughs> I'm one of those people that's so smart that I'm uncomfortable in this world. <laughs> and I'm scared to live. I'm not scared to live, but it's scary out here. God damn. I know how flimsy this shit is. I can see through this. I can see the truth. There's an animal inside of each and every one of you. It's not good. 
Shit is real. Listen, I was looking at the paper the other day. I'm not making this up. There's a serial rapist in Houston. There's nothing funny about serial rape, but... <laughs> What is noteworthy about this particular rapist is that all of his victims have been men. Enjoy your evening. I can't believe you clapped about that. It's a man raping men in Houston. It's the most gangster shit. So far, like, like, like seven men have already come forward in the Houston area and reported this motherfucker, which, which means he must have raped thousands. That's a tough phone call for us to make. It's not like when you get raped, ladies, there's no, uh, society don't give a fuck about male rape. There's no hotline for us. When men get raped, you just gotta get up and walk that shit off. Huh? I got raped. Uh, call me slipping. Take that shit to the grave. <laughs> Couldn't even tell my wife some shit like that. Come on, all disheveled and shit. <laughs> hey, where have you been? It's three o'clock in the morning. Out fucking another woman. Just go back to sleep, okay? <laughs> I do, man. Yeah, man, I was hanging out in the black community today. Both of those guys are great. <laughs> we got along. I got laws today in Montreal. The police helped me find my way. The police helped me. See, I just got back from Los Angeles. Let me tell you something, LAPD overreact to everything. You ever see them in action? Just, oh, oh my goodness. Stop jaywalking. <laughs> it's like real racially tense out there. I took two white friends of mine to an all-black party in L.A. These guys were in shock. They had no idea that black people sometimes call each other nigger. As an endearing term. And they saw the brothers at the party like, hey, what up, nigga? <laughs> My man. <laughs> no, what's up, nigga? Pat, pat. My white friends, they got all excited. Hey! How you niggers doing? The music stopped. Everyone looked at them. Oh my goodness. I mean, they got their asses kicked that night. I hated to do it, but you understand. It was like, they embarrassed me. In those me and one of the guys, this is real ironic. We got in like a little Rodney King incident ourselves. Me and this guy, Dave, we were eating dinner at a restaurant. Dave got in an argument over the check with the waiter. Next thing we know, the owner, the manager, all the employees get together and just beat the shit out of him. Go, pal! He sued him for half a million dollars and won the case because the whole incident was recorded on videotape. Sounds amazing, right? Mm -mm. That's why me and my buddy Dave always carry a camcorder with us. Because <laughs> you never know when a Kodak moment might pop up, you know. <laughs> we'll be hanging out and be like, all right, Dave, go ahead, I got you. You ready, man? Go ahead, do it. I just be ready. Hey! Officer! <laughs> Kiss my ass! <laughs> what? Uh-oh. Uh Roll them. <laughs> All the police problems in the States, man. It makes me wish superheroes existed. Normally, I hate superheroes. Not because they never help out black people. Uh -uh. I think they're bad role models for children. You know, just look at them. Look at Wonder Woman. Look at how she dresses. You know, those big ass red hooker boots. Blue underwear with stars and stuff all over them. They always give women ridiculous weapons. Wonder Woman has a golden lasso that makes you tell the truth. Oh, not that. <laughs> the hell is that gonna do? She's gonna catch a bad guy. Gotcha. Oh, nice tits. <laughs> so we don't never fight crime in black neighborhoods. No, I would love to see Batman in a black neighborhood. 
I can see him there. He just... Robin. Yes, Batman. <laughs> Didn't we park the car right here, man? <laughs> having such a wonderful time. You know, folks, any of you guys ever do this? I got in a little trouble when I was coming into Montreal. I walked through that little x-ray thing at the airport and said a joke about having a gun. <laughs> Don't do that, y'all. <laughs> now, I was just trying to be funny. You know, I walked through the thing, it said, boop, boop, boop. He said, I'm sorry, eh, but you have to go back through. I said, oh, no problem. Must have been my pistol. <laughs> hey! <laughs> hey, I was joking! I mean, he was ready to kill me, man. Pulled his gun out and stick out all that shit. But my buddy Dave had the camera roll. <laughs> Peace, everybody. I'm out of here. It feels good doing stand-up again. I, I took a year off from stand-up. Not that I don't like stand-up as much as I just don't like uh, uh, microphones. I'm, I'm sick of talking to them. I mean, I used to work at uh, Burger King for six years. <laughs> I didn't work the mic. I worked the grill. A, a guy named Steve used to work the mic, and I, I thought he was, uh, he was just a pain in my ass. He used to, every time someone orders him, Hi, how are you? Can I have a, can I have a Whopper with cheese? Sure. Ah! A Whopper with cheese! You son of a bitch, I'm right behind you. Just turn around and ask me for, for a Whopper. You know, Canada, Canada is nice. This is kind of like a kinder and gentler America, in a way. Even like the police are nicer. I'm not gonna say they're nice, I don't know. But they just smile at least, you know? I've, I've been to jail before, twice, not as a prisoner. <laughs> One time was from childhood, I was suspended from school 23 times during February. <laughs> I wasn't bad though, I was just mischievous. I got hold of all my teachers' home phone numbers. At the time, I thought it was funny. I, I was calling them death threats. I know that's bad, man. You know, my English teacher, Mr. Johnson, I called him up. He was all nice on the phone. Hello? Johnson residence. Is this Mr. Johnson? <laughs> yes, it is. And who might this be? You're a dead man, Johnson. Who is this? Shut up, punk! You're gonna die. Unless you change David Chappelle's grades. I don't know how he caught me. After that, they put me in a program called Scared Straight. Have you ever heard of this? This is where they put bad kids like me in prison. And the prisoners yell at us, they tell us scary stories. You know, they try to scare us into being good. And the other kids were scared. But I was not scared. I was just heckling the guy. Hey, shut up, you convict. <laughs> like, I'm going to take advice from you. You look like a person that made all the right choices in life. <laughs> Wrap this up. I got to be out of here by three. The time you leaving. This guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. The other time I went to jail was, uh, had nothing to do with me. Really. I was just bailing a friend of mine out of jail, which is probably no big deal to you. But if you're a black dude, you know, you got to walk right into the belly of the beast. You don't want to. <laughs> a black dude wants to go to jail. I was, I was scared. I had to look non-threatening. Hey, how are you? I'm here to bail out a, a friend of mine. Oh, okay. Well, While you're here, you do fit a description. If you'll just walk this way. We'll... 